Hello, welcome back. I feel like shit. Great. <laughs> I think that's very important to say. Uh, anyway, welcome back to this amazing channel. It's not an amazing channel, isn't it? Uh, today we're going to do a running cycle. Because uh, we did a walking cycle. Why did I crap? Uh, we did a walking cycle uh, before. And some of you asked for the running cycle. So here's the running cycle. This bear will run as fast as, as this bear can to lose weight, I guess. Which I never understand that concept. Like, why would you go to run? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't go, I don't go for runs. So like, do, you don't burn that much calories. Why, right? why, why people run? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I'm not a running person. I what the hell? Anyway, insane gymnastics right there. Uh, so the bear will run, and I'm gonna show you how you can do that uh, for free. Um, I'm, I'm not selling stuff. Okay. Relax. Amazing intro. I know. I'm. I'm. I'm called at intros. I. I know. <laughs> Don't worry. What we're going to do is first, despite of the character that you're gonna have, I'm gonna use this character. But this kind of applies to any other character thing that you will have and you will like to animate. First, we need to identify to make our four main poses. To get to those four main poses, though, first, we need to... I have a pen, huh? <laughs> First, we need to um, ident identify the two main poses uh, inside in any uh, run cycle there is. Usually, it's called the extreme pose, right? And the passing pose. Um, the extreme pose will be the pose for the character where the character is off the ground with with both with his uh, of his wait what blah, blah, mm. <laughs> the character will be off the ground with both of his legs up. The, the, no sexual jokes there, okay? Um, and the other pose that we need to have is the passing pose between the legs, uh, and you will see that in any run cycle. That you will do and other people will do so if you don't have those two main poses then chances are you're not having a character running you will be probably having a character walking and you don't want that ideally right so we have extreme pose which is this one i'm gonna have a passing pose which is uh, the arrows are great i know uh so we're gonna go from the extreme to the passing pose from the passing pose we're gonna go back to this extreme and everything will be in a big loop that's why it's called a cycle as well i usually draw a line to indicate my crowd as well and once i identify my and once i did everything here from those two poses now we can make two more poses i'm gonna cough i don't want to i have my vaccine tomorrow come on mm. That was mainly enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, once we establish an extreme, the passing pose from those two poses, we're gonna make two more poses. Basically, we're gonna make the same poses, but we're gonna just switch the the legs. In this case, we're gonna have the extreme pose, but the front leg will go in the back. Will go in the other direction, and the back leg will go in the other direction. So they will just switch places, if you will. Same thing goes for the passing pose. So we're just gonna reverse the legs and we're gonna have exactly the same who's knocking on my door Sh shut up i don't, I don't care <laughs> we're gonna have the exact same pose but with um switch legs and we're gonna have four four poses based on which we can uh, start adding the in-betweens and we will get a smooth looking running cycle so that's my uh, recap. So here's the recording I did of this shenanigans. My two main poses, the extreme one and the passing pose, were on one layer. What I did is I cut one of them and I paste it. I made, basically when you cut something from your layer in Krita using the selection tool, you can make a new layer with that selection that you have. So I had both of the poses on the separate layers. So what I did in the timeline, I choose one of the layers to make a duplicate frame with the pose I have. And I did that exact same thing for the other pose that I have. I duplicate a frame there and I just move the frame from above to the layer I have. So I can have both of the positions on the same layer, but in a, in a different frames. And that, the way I did here uh, in the video. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can just start 
drawing the poses or you can draw them on the side and then use them as a reference. We're going to use the method, the, the method of pose to pose. It's just simple, it's just easy that way to animate, especially when you know what you want to animate. You have a character and you want to make that character run. Okay, I need to know what are the main poses and you just lay them down and then from there you go and fill the gaps. Uh, and it, it just the animation looks more it looks complete and because you can do that straight ahead there's a method called straight ahead uh, but usually that method is used for other stuff like um, water fire and stuff that they are fluid in space and time probably not um but yeah so we're gonna use the post pose and we once we have our four main poses from there, we can create in between frames between those poses. The in between frames they act as a gap, as a bridge between the first frame and the third frame. So the in between frame will be the second frame that will connect uh, point A to point B. In my case, we will connect the extreme pose to the passing pose. What will happen between them? When, when, not when, where the leg will go? Is the leg going forward or the leg going backwards? Backwards. Uh, I focused at first on the legs and how they move, and I, I didn't put much thought into the rest of the body of the character, which is kind of a mistake uh, to do. But it it looks okay uh, because uh, if you look at it when I, when you go through the, the frames, you will see that it's actually selling the movement, and that's what we want in to the animation to sell the movement. Not always because if you make Character to the what you have characters uh, to to you know to think and believe and feel and that's that's the real deal. It's not just the movement. It doesn't matter how smooth something looks. If you if you if the viewer is watching it and they don't feel anything, then maybe you didn't do your job right. Um, but with that said, we're doing just a bull run uh, with this uh, bear boy or is it a girl? I don't know. I don't care actually. Um, if you have uh, um, names for the bear, I would love to hear them in the comments down below. If you haven't subscribed, I don't know what you're doing with your life, please do so. Or, or don't, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, once we're done with the four main process, we do the in-betweens uh, to have a more smooth animation going. And I'm going to stop here and I'll, I'm going to walk you through why my, my, my keyframes look are with different colors behind this if you read that uh where's my this is my rough is it yeah it, this is my rough animation and when you do your rough animation when you uh, just try to be loose okay just don't don't try to make perfect lines in the beginning it's just first you're wasting your time to be perfect cause that's just stupid right so, second you are sometimes you might focus on the detail rather than the big picture in my case this big picture is the whole character and that I, I kind of did that to a certain degree uh but this is my rough animation i'm gonna play this for you and it's very like you can see the lines going over you can see that the most of my inventories are i add smears to them because so i thought that I, I I wanted to add smears, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how to. It, it, I thought that it will sell the movement. When you add smears to your animation, and if you don't know what a smear is, I'm going to go here. Maybe maybe this this thing, this frame, this leg here is a smear when it smears. And you see that a lot in to the animation. They use that a lot to just to sell the motion blur that is happening. If I do this, do the Johnson the one, you can't see me, right? Um, you have this smear that your eyes, the camera cannot catch. Well, I guess it can if I slow down. But if I do it fast, that's the smear. Uh, and I decide to use uh, most of my inventories, which are, uh, I decide to color them in yellow, in different colors. Just um, show you uh, which are the inventories and which are the keyframes. The inventories are in yellow, and most of them uh, have a little smear to it. Just to add this motion that we want to sell, and in this case, we want to make this character to run super fast, sonic fast, kind of go fast. Um, and the other ones, the purple frames are the main keyframes that we see here, and those are our main 
or poses that I was talking about that you can get from the extreme pose and the passing pose. And of course, if I play with this, I can make this image to be even more smooth. Now, I did, I feel like when I look this uh, now, because I did this like a day ago, I guess, and I wasn't feeling well. Um, I couldn't sleep for the whole week. Like, past week, I couldn't sleep at all. I, 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 I couldn't fall asleep, and the moment I fell asleep, I slept like for one or two hours, and then I woke up, and then I, I hate my life. Thank you very much, Cody. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Anyway, I feel I mess up. I mess his belly, and this whole thing. I wanted to make the belly bounce, and the whole character bounce, and instead I didn't do that because I was focusing more uh, on the um, the movement of the legs rather than the whole character. And that's why I'm saying when you try to overanalyze something or just focus on one thing to make that perfect line, you kind of discard, uh, discharge the other thing, the, the other things that are happening, and the bigger picture, right? So, uh, but it's good to make mistakes. And you, well, it's not good to make mistakes, but it's if you make a mistake, it's good to see your mistake in order to fix it. If you don't see your mistake, you just keep going and you're thinking, oh, I'm alright, I didn't do anything, oh, and this looks amazing, yes. No, it doesn't. It's not going to look amazing, it's not going to look perfect, but you can learn from your from your mistakes. Don't beat yourself if you, do, if you don't do something perfectly. It's completely fine. Uh, we're all human. <laughs> Relax, kids. It's going to be fine. Um, so yeah, I didn't make a mistake. I think I, I didn't focus on the bows because in the book of uh, the animator survival kit B, uh, they say that the, uh, um, the good run cycle uh, will have a good bounce or something along those lines. I don't remember. Where's the book? Somewhere. Oh, it's over there. It has stickers on top. Uh, let me show you my stickers. The in that book they say that the run cycle should have a bounce to it, which um yes and no. If your character, if you want to make your character cartoony, yeah, do add that bounce. Uh, if you want to make your animation more realistic, let's say you're animating a in a style in anime or whatever, you wouldn't want to have that um over exaggerated bounce, I guess. But it's up to you what kind of uh motion you want to portray here um as you notice the the character when we do runs if you run because i'm not a huge fan of running but running in general i was an outdoor kid i don't know now i i just whatever but if you are an outdoor kid even if you're not you when you run you, you kind of lean forward right in this case as you see my character is also leaning forward now yes the hands are behind because yeah that narrative I, I i put them behind mainly because i didn't want to deal with them i was like they, they will be behind i don't care um uh, and that will move them i mean they're barely moved if i go around and look at them not that much of a movement, but there's still a bounce now when, when I look at it. Just the belly, I kind of mess up the belly. But overall, we have the leaning forward, uh, we have the movement, the, the passing from the legs, and it does look like this character is running. So I will say that this is a good example of a running character. Uh, but in the, uh, in the book, they say that it's good to have a bounce. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to make the belly bounce, but I didn't make the belly properly bounce. Maybe you can make your character belly to bounce. I don't know. My camera is dying, so that's uh, <laughs> that's a good sign, I guess. Anyway, I did my roof, and then I did the cleanup, and then I added the colors, and with the smears and everything, kind of got this weird looking. It's not weird looking, but cool running cycle that you can do. With when you are uh, approaching this from simple to difficult, uh, just to start with the two main um, poses, multiply those, add more, and you get something like this, or even better. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you're doing well. I hope everything's all right. Uh, stay healthy. Drink your vitamins. Uh, I'm having my second vaccine tomorrow, so I'm a little bit uh, worried about that because I have a little itchy stuffy nose, but. Hopefully they will not be bothered by that. And uh, yeah, um, that's uh, that's pretty much it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.